Good morning. Happy Sunday morning to those who are uh, tuning in. So lovely, sunny Sunday, shiny Sunday morning outside the window here. You can't really see it, it's just um, over that direction. Um, hope you're all doing well and thanks for tuning in. <coughs> um, so today's extravaganza. And oh, just checking my internet connection. Hopefully, tell me if there's any problems with vision or sound, and I'll um, see what I can do. So uh, today we're going to look at the um, wonderful Analog 4 again, one of my favorite little boxes, and um, enhancing that with an SQ1 or even two SQ1s, uh, and there's a little core KO2 on the side. Uh, the purpose of this really is, although the Electron sequencer is fantastic. I'll go through that in a second for those who don't know about it. The um, SQ1s really sort of help, particularly in a performance mode. And um, I'll show you some of that in a second. It's mainly because if you're doing things to the sequencer on the Analog 4, you can't really do any <coughs> sound adjustments at the same time. In other words, it's a sort of you do the sequencer, then you do the sound, then you might play something live with the keyboard. But this, this having external sequencers really, really help. Um, just looking at who's here, Philip Taylor. Yeah, uh, got some SQ1s, that's great. Yeah, I have um, two of them. I had them in a rack with some NTS1s, programming them separately, probably saw that years ago. And um, yeah, the great little devices, bar Bartel, Battle, uh, really looking forward to this. Curve Planner, I hear you. Um, good, and glad you reached 5,000. Oh yes, forgot to mention that, 5,000 subscribers, which is pretty cool. Um, as I said, 5,000 is, um, is pretty good for sort of original music. I don't do a lot of demos and equipment reviews, although this is a bit like that. This is more about performance, I suppose. So thank you everyone. Um, and Patrick as well. Thank you everyone for subscribing and so on. Let's, um, I'll uh, mention it again when I get to 5 million, which will be about 2059, I think. Uh, year 2059. Anyway, down to what we've got here. Uh, so I'm just going to turn that off. Just briefly about the analog for the sequencer side. So it's pretty basic linear sequencer. Um, so, for example, you've got four sounds on different tracks. So track one, two, three, four. Track one at the moment is just set up to this simple sound. I'll just show you how the sequencer works. Um, you can go into step mode and just program in notes on, say, four beat, on one on every four beats. Put one on the right one there. So it's a linear sequencer. Uh, I can play in real time over the top of that. So now I've got eight notes. And you can do various things to that sequence. You can obviously add delay and effects. You can I'll take some of the reverb off. You can change the step length. So, and remember, I think like I said earlier, to do this, you have to do it sort of the sequencer on the on the fly, um, uh, focus on the sequencer, and the rest sort of looks after itself. I'll explain that in a minute. So I'll go to seven, eight, 14 steps, 
eight steps. And I don't know if you can see the screen there, but you can see it changing. Uh, go back to 16 steps. And it does remember the notes. You can also do things, of course, like go into step mode, change specific notes on the fly. Change that to a G, change that one to a G, change that one to a high D, and so on. And you can subtract notes, of course. So, so that's the sort of electron sequence. So when you're in performance mode, um, one of the other problems is when you go back into the steps, if you've um, taken some off, it forgets them. So you can see it's lost all the notes now. I'll just put a drum, um, a bass note on so you can hear it uh, with some rhythm in the background. So I'll put 16s in there. And again, I can reduce the step length. Let's go into 9.8, 9, 9.16 rather. And we can um, clear that. So that's very linear. In other words, it goes from left to right or beginning to end and just loops. You can go up to 64 steps. You can also pattern chain to create a lot of um, sort of song type modes as well. Um, but bringing an external sequencer allows a whole bunch of enhancements. So um, the way I've got this connected is that this top row of the SQ1 is MIDI channel 1 feeding track 1. The bottom row is MIDI channel 2 feeding track 2. And then this second one, which is it's actually a MIDI, MIDI merge, which is using the clock from here. So this is the master clock, 120. Um, you can see the sync-ins there and there. Um, they're coming out of the CV outs of this to synchronize it. Um, but sorry, the other track is track three, MIDI channel three on this row here, which is playing a sort of bass sound. You'll hear in a minute as part of the performance. Um, but going back to track one that I was just demoing, if I wanted to um, do a similar sequence on here, you can see it's being triggered and I can turn off the steps in real time on the SQ1. And the first big advantage is that it remembers notes. So if I turn off, tell me if you can't hear the sequences. Um, turn this whole one up. Bit. Put a bit more filter on it. So when I go back to that now, it remembers it. So that's that's one advantage. The other one is you can reverse it, so it's not going left to right all the time. So I can just quickly, and now it's going backwards. Put more notes in. I'll play that with the drum beat. The bass, no, the kick anyway. Let's go back to forward only. So that that that's one basic enhancement. If I get them all active. I can change the notes on the fly because this is um, uh, quantized in modular world, which means it's tuned. I can change any notes if I, in fact, if I go into step jump mode, I can change the notes on the fly by holding that. I can tune this one. But one of the um, the best things about the SQ1 is it uses um, a thing which is part of the Korg universe called Active Step. And you can see on the left here I'm just switching between modes. So the first one is just gate on and off. And I can switch them all off. Miss one there. Um, but I can also go to Active Step which allows me to switch off which notes play in a sequence. 
but instead of leaving a gap it actually carries on and that, that's where the, this performance thing really kicks in so you can see it's only playing that single note there if I add another one if I add um, the kick to that and then so this is how you can create pretty cool polymetric things very quickly so we've got that sort of three over four So being able to, you can't actually do what I'm doing here on the uh, analog four sequencer and do this at the same time. So let's say I wanted to change the sequence a bit and also change the filter of the sound, for example. of things obviously I can um, I can set up some automation to do that but it gets um, you sort of lose track of where you are this is all sort of real-time hands-on and it's the same with the bass so if I um, let's turn the bass up with the, uh, the kick in fact, I'm going to add a bit more percussion. Um, just this is the driven track, just in terms of why you're hearing a drum machine, is because on track four, I'm using it um, in sound lock mode. Um, I'm sure those familiar with Electron will understand that you can have different sounds on different keys. So, for example, if I wanted um, a different sound on five there. you can change what's on each key. And I've got some pre-programmed here. One of the things you do in performance mode is often turn down the volume for certain sound locks, which have parameter locks as well. Um, so I can just introduce, as you can see, steps three, four, seven, and eight on the fly. So you can see this bass line is in on the gate, it's actually going, only got one note playing at the beginning. If I open all gates and go into active step, I can then do some clever stuff. Just have, keep an eye on the, um, the volume. Um, uh, the SK ones have also got a built in gate, but this one, um, this baseline here, I'll just. Staying on it just for now so you can see it's playing this this G I could on the fly change that note I can add extra notes But the nice thing with the um, controlling the sync from the Analog 4 is I can, and I've done this on previous jams, I can actually change the, um, the clock out pulse. So that I've now changed it to three, uh, one clock every three notes. And you get this lovely polymetric thing going. And then when you change the notes, I'll um, see if I can get the pitch making a bit more sense for you. And let's bring, for example, the sequencer in, because obviously we've got three sequencer tracks here corresponding to these three tracks. the 
bass. Um, let's kill everything. I don't know what the bass sounds like on your speakers. It's a little um, crazy on mine. Let's just uh, fix that. It's kind of a bit low, so let's go up an octave. We got a note playing here by accident, so I'll turn that off. That's better. Um, you can, of course, move between uh, sequences on here. So, for example, um, show you how that works. We'll just put in a little bass sequence on this uh, on the analog four. One of the um, issues I've noticed is when this is playing and it's sending um, notes out to a track, it can mess mess these up a bit. So let's uh, let's do that again. You probably hear it cutting off the notes. So let's just um, play uh, play a couple in manually just to get the beat. I'll put the beat back in. So that's coming from here. And then you can switch to the um, like the triplet beat coming off the um, off the SQ1. Um, still getting a little too sustained, but that's better. And in performance mode, you can turn off that. When you're in performance mode, you can do things like and, uh, the Electron Analog 4 has, for example, a performance macro. So if you're playing some sequences like this, I'll bring the second sequence in as well on here. So that's um, turn on all the notes. the active step. So the top uh, sequence one is playing five notes, sequence two is playing one note. Change that to three. And uh, in performance mode we can do, I've got some basic macros which is more or less filters. Let's bring the bass in on a third offbeat. So that's um, so that you can do nice things like get the polymetric performance mode going. So that almost sounds like triplet time, and then you can go into performance. And what I'm going to do here is turn up the filters for quite a few of those tracks, and then immediately bring in the drums and drop the. Um, and all the time I can be switching sequences or sequences around, cho choosing different notes. Changing the sounds while changing the notes, like I showed them before. Um, off on the filter. Dropping 
drop things out. I can drop things out by obviously killing the sequence completely. Um, in fact, there's some notes on that first sequence here, so I'm going to delete the analog four sequence on track one. And then all we're left with is the bass. Got a bit of gate control here. And I can change the clock of that on the fly. Um, so that's another advantage of these, is that when you change the clock, because um, you can, in the, um, in the scale settings page, adjust the divisions. So for example, that one's on half speed at the moment. Uh, this, which track are we on? The bass track is on, oh, it's on full speed. If I wanted to change that, I could go across to here and change that, but it does cause some um, synchronization issues. Sometimes it will go out, sometimes it will stay in. But being able to control these externally, or in this case, I'm using you know the, the CV clock in here just as an act, just instead of having a separate clock, I can immediately go, right, I'm gonna go into uh, two steps per click. Then, you know, you can do things like, particularly with the bass, uh, add the delay in, you get much, uh, a much better synchronized delay. And then bring the other synth parts back in over here. Um, and because these are in uh, two, two steps, oh, sorry, step per uh, two, Two beats I can change the clock of those as well because they're coming from a separate CV let's take them into threes and bring them back into time again back out into threes again. Uh, all the time fiddling around the sequences, changing them. And like I said, most of the stuff you're seeing here is really hard to do on the electron sequencer. So dropping two sequences out from a more complicated sequence by the way, you probably noticed I panned the, these two left and right, so you can differentiate between them. So even, even doing a basic, going from that, which is just two notes. So that's now G on both sequences. But let's say going from that, which is playing one note, so suddenly playing three, and this one I'm gonna change to five. In one step, pretty hard on the, just the electron sequencer. And likewise, going into reverse mode on the fly. show you what reverse mode does. I'll turn sequence two down. So you can see it's, it, it reverses and it actually doubles the last note each time. So you get that nice two step thing going here. Bring the triplet bass back in. Drop the drums, do a bit of a, a uh, build up in performance mode, bring the, and, and this time I'm going to start the drums, but bring in the second sequencer once it sort of settles down.
the other advantage is of course I can um, because the sequencer is independent let's just turn off the two high sequences while the bass is playing I can do uh, and, and while I could change the sequence Um, so while, while I'm changing the notes up here, I could be, for example, adding some LFO filtering effects. And it just really enhances the performance, being able to do these things on the fly. I could... let's just... Likewise, do the, the filtering manually if I wanted. Um, change the tuning. All the time, perhaps bringing notes in and out, reversing the sequence. Take it back into a bass sound. Some auto panning on. Um, so this is in the reverse mode and it's quite good for basses because you can get that um, two notes, two notes at the end of each each line. Add a sub bass and all the time having the, the sequence running independently means I don't have to switch from sound design mode into sequencer mode on the analog 4 itself and for the sake of you know 100 bucks I mean I've got two sequences here um, you could just have this on one track potentially doing a 16 step sequence or if you reverse it it becomes um, a 32 step sequence let's bring some of the high lines back in And the same with that, let's put some auto pan on it. Bit of filtering LFO on the, on the filter. And likewise on the drums, I can just um, drop out some parts of the um, sound locks. If I want them, something a bit more minimal. Sequence two. Go out of uh, into single step here on, on this one. I'm um, sorry, single direction. <coughs> Let's bring the um, triple clock again in on the bass, which is this track track three. go super fast of course with the clock let's make these one step uh, clock beat drop the bass out let's have a bit of a breakdown section The only disadvantage of having triplet time is, of course, because the um, analog four has only got one delay. <coughs> Excuse me. It's kind of hard to to um, have uh, triplet time and sync the delay. So you do end up with that doubling effect. So sometimes you, you're best turning off the delay, otherwise you're getting a chordal effect. I can demonstrate that on that one. So you're actually getting a very muddy two notes at once, so you have to be careful. It works when you're in um, two steps per clock beat. So So you really have to sort of 
turn the delay off to get something a bit cleaner. again you can't do on the analog 4 is uh, turning these knobs these are the pitches and get those types of things going on um, I'm going to LFO this track 2 which has been triggered from here to have a volume on and off so it's phasing in and out this is all analog 4 stuff of course have this in double mode, so it's a double mode, I mean it goes to a, a static note and then you're adjusting the first one. And all the time you could be adjusting the sound on that. Um, so doing that on um, track two here, having, uh, let's get um, track one going again. I'm changing the clock because that's, uh, I think I'm still on fast clock, let's go back to the on the drums, I know probably a lot of people watching this will think that drum beat's a bit static. Um, the only thing these guys don't do, like modular as well, is probability type things. So um, one of the things I could do, for example, on the um, this drum beat is make the probability of any hi-hats, and there's a bass drum on here as well on that step. 25%. So it creates a bit more of a, a, a difference each time. And I suppose in performance mode, you, the idea is you're always hands on with the sequence at the same time as, as playing this. Um, of course, if you want to enhance this setup even further, a little baby, um, the little baby KO2 over here is a nice little add on for doing solos over things. So <clears throat> getting rid of the rhythm track completely. For example, we can start with a nice little sleepy sequence. I'm gonna go into a performance in a bit, sort of using these principles. So if you've got any sort of cue, any questions, because once I go into performance, I'll turn the mic off and, and just kind of do a, a piece. But this is a good example of let's say a build-up using this setup. 
So track one sequence, I think a um, little bit of LFO on the filtering. Can change the sustain on it so it's a little bit longer. Um, so this KO2 is going into the external ends of the analog 4, so it means I can put the same reverb and delay that everything else is getting. And it sort of marries it better. So you can see as I'm playing this, um, and I was doing some balancing there, I could add or change different notes here. Turn track one up a bit so you can hear it better. I can, that's just a four step, I could make it five very easily. You get that sort of instant tangerine dream. Um, of course you could bring second sequence in, it's just playing one note at the moment. It's, it's probably inappropriate sort of sound, but we'll bring it in anyway. And I'm using that trick of adjusting the pitch. Bring it, I'll take that into two, two steps. I can reduce the complexity of track one and then fade out track one, leaving just this sequence. Um, if you remember, I put an LFO on the volume for track two, so I'm just going to reduce that a bit because it's And a good opportunity now to bring in this sort of triplet bass which gives that full sense of tempo. And we'll drop out sequence two. And while I've got my finger on the KO2 here, I can actually reach across Choose track three, let's add a bit of reverb to it, give some atmosphere, so it's sort of a build-up type thing. And I'm sort of going to get the drums ready, I'm going to press track four, give me thumb, look at what's going on. Um, press uh, the hi-hat type stuff and make sure it's turned off. And now I'm going to get that false um, beat coming in at some point. So I've set it up just to do the kick on one and five. It's only doing an eight step loop. Um, now I can bring a different sequence in on track one. Oh, another thing I didn't mention actually is the Gato. So let's put the whole sequence in on track one. There's a thing called slide, so I can change the... This is, again, something you can't do very easily on the uh, Analog 4 by itself, but you can put a slide so when it moves between notes, it will create a slide effect. Not very evident on that one because I've got, um, on track one sound, I've got a bit of a long delay anyway, so let's turn that down. Might be able to hear the slides better. Okay, not, not super brilliant that. You can hear the slides a lot more on the bass sounds, I think. So let's I'll turn the slides off just in case they affect the piece later and I forget. So here we go, the performance build-up like I did before. I'm going to change the sound now to something a bit more... I 
we've got volume control on here, I can turn it up on. So a performance builder on the macros, all leading to just hitting that and bringing back, oh I could hit it there if I wanted and bring it back, or bring in the drums. bass a bit, let's bring it live a bit, I'll put some LFO on the bass, take off the reverb obviously, and Perhaps play around with the clocks of the sequences, the main sequences that are currently on two. And what I'm doing here is, while I'm playing the KO2, I'm adjusting the um, steps per clock. So, because um, CVC, which you can see up here, is going out to this sync here. That's why I'm getting this live clock adjustment on this whole SQ1. And because it's controlling two tracks at once, it's not ideal. And all the time, while I'm doing fiddling with one sequence, all the sounds, I can be obviously um, changing the bass sequence over here. I'm in the CV mode, if I wanted to go pretty heavy on a four step bass, I could go from the three into the two just by doing this. And then, as before, put some delay on, drop the sequences back. and this, I've mentioned this a few times, I could be changing the notes, putting it into reverse, oops, take the camera, a bit heavy on the delay there, and the clock, screeching in the background, that's um, uh, an Australian king parrot wanting some food. Uh, what was I doing? So, a bit of delay on that. Um, let's bring in, I'm going to do all this in performance in a minute, but I'm sort of talking through it, so if you see me doing things, you kind of got a sense of what I'm doing. Not rocket science. So, the this SQ1, you can see it's pretty fast. I can slow it down in advance 
So I'm now going to bring bring it in in triplet time, which will give a bit more of a polymetric feel to the whole thing. Um, because the delay is still set to dotted eighth notes, you're getting that, um, what would you call it, uh, chordal effect as they're playing over the top of each other. Again, adjusting the sound and adjusting the sequence at the same time. Reverse the sequence. A section, let's see what sequence two is doing. Um, you can also, as you can see here, start sequences, you don't have to be on the first note each time because of active step on sequence two. That will trigger at the start, but it doesn't have to be the start note, so I can change the start note to that. that one. Uh, track two just a bit more sustained. You can see I was adjusting the gate here as well on that one. So I could do global track one and two, gradually increase the gate time to introduce so now let's stop that there. So if there's no um, no questions, bit of hissing. I don't know where that's coming from. No, I think I've got the treble. That's why. Tell me if it's too too much um, high notes. So what questions do we have? Anything? We've got uh, two SQ ones. Hello, yes, Bill Smith. Um, no, I don't. I was being a bit bit clickbaity in the title. It's not really a hundred dollar toy i mean it's a very useful cheap utility um, i did have this these connected to my modular rig uh, for quite a while and i've developed i've created some racks where these have been very prominent and they're super useful and uh, like i said even if you operate in, in just on one midi channel out or cv gate out you've also got a cv gate out for each of those as well so it's fantastic for modular gear um, it's just very well priced for the fact you get the um, all of those active step step features which annoyingly um, you can't really do with electron um, I think I expressed yeah the I oh, see I don't regard this as a toy I, I use this a lot as a um, solo device uh, because you can get some really nice, you know, it saves having a complete separate synthesizer on the side for doing solos and things. The um, Chaosolator Pro on my bigger setup I use all the time. Um, but what was I saying? Yeah, these because these have got Active Step, which is more or less the same in the other toys people regard as toys, like the Korg Volkers, which you probably know I do a lot of stuff on. And uh, these have got the Korg Active Step, which is uh, annoying that um, Electron can't sort of put those in into here. Um, and to, to briefly explain what I mean by Active Step, uh, if I change track one to just eight, eight steps, um, Active Step would mean, because this is now going from eight and just looping, in fact, let's put the extra notes in. So that's um, eight steps. 
What active step would mean would be I could take out like steps four and five and it would basically skip them one, two, three, six, seven, eight. It would just do six steps. It would be a really nice feature to have, you know, we'll set it up in one of the macros or one of the settings. Um, so instead of these gaps, it would do one, three, six, eight, but in a very fast, in the normal speed of four. So that's what active step means. And then the ability to reverse it, perhaps. I mean, that's okay, um, but lots of gaps. If you don't want the gaps, then that's kind of where this comes in. Just explain it again, because I'll be doing a lot of that. So this is an active step coming from here. I'm going to put in play. And let's get the CV going a bit faster. And let's not have it in reverse, just so it's straight. It's obvious what's going on. Just taking one note out. And the note back in. It's great for build-ups where you perhaps start with one note. Add a second. Leave that running for a bit. Particularly in the sort of long epic pieces. And then playing with this toy over here. Changing notes, still keeping it three steps, but just changing one of the notes. So, looks kind of simple what I'm doing, but it's, it's kind of hard to do on here. You'd have to be, you'd have to be doing this, changing the step length, then note to four, then changing the notes. So it's a two-handed operation, you know, to get into that sort of scale mode. For example, whereas here it's super easy. And it's nice to have nice to have breaks. I mean, these things can do breaks, of course, if you're just going to gate mode, if you just want against the beat. Super easy to do. And you can also have the steps in active step as well. So it's about finding the notes that are active because that one wasn't active on the gate on and off, so it's not going to play. So that's kind of fun in itself. You can create some nice um, step to rhythms. Uh, well, sort of active step combined with normal linear sequence. So that's kind of cool as well. So that's the, sorry, the top button there activates gate. So you need to turn on all the notes usually. And then active step selectively chooses ones to just rotate around. Um, someone said the stripped, uh, turn that off. Bit of a sequence in the background. Um, we're gonna go into performance mode in a second. Um, so stripped implement the chaos elators is what places it in the toy bracket for me. Definitely cool sounds on its own, but Korg really dropped the ball in the MIDI. Yeah, they, the, the cool thing with the Korg Pro, at least you can synchronize them with MIDI in. Um, yeah, there's no MIDI out. Um, and they would be a good controller for other synths, but they've got, you know, the Korg Pro has got a lot of sounds built in. And when you get the arpeggiator going, you can have it perfectly in sync with the rest of your gear, of course. But um, anyway, I'm not here to talk about... Uh, oh yeah, there is a MIDI cable that you can do MIDI out as well. Yeah, but the... You know, we're not here to talk about that. That was really about the, the sequences. And a lot of people buy these um, as extra bits of gear. They're great for synchronizing analog setups. 
like uh, if you've got some cheap Behringers, if you want to keep on the cheap side. Or, you know, you can use these on some synths that don't have sequencers. A good example is um, the Hydra synth, which doesn't have an onboard sequencer. So just having one of these on the side. And I think particularly the new one, the Deluxe, allows you to split the keyboard. So you can have a sequencer playing one side and you sort of jamming over the top. Um, it's always a bit weird when people see these with electron sequencers, because these guys... I've got them all built in, and most people say, my God, they're the best thing since sliced bread, electron sequences. Why would you need these? Which is part of the reason for doing this. So if there's any specific questions about that, um, SQ1s and analog gear, analog um, and electron gear particularly, because these work well with cycles. I've used them with cycles quite a few times. I've used them just with NTS1s. Um, super small little device on the side if you want to go micro um, I've used them on much bigger gear as well and so on so let's do a little performance I don't know how long I'm into the session I'm in about an hour in so um, it's probably things I've missed I'll just have a see if I've got any notes oh yeah some of the limitations let's do the traditional <laughs> It's almost a gear review. What's some of the bad things about them? Uh, one of them is the note range. So they are tuned to C minor with a sharpened six, which is like an A natural. So the natural key for these is G minor, uh, which is why a lot of the time I'm using, using G as the root here, I think. Let's see if it's still set up. Yeah, let's just uh, tune it. That's like a C, D, E flat, F, G. Um, so you're sort of limited to a, a single key. Obviously you can tune your receiving gear up and down to get it into specific keys, but it's a, it's a bit of a pain in the bottom. It's a shame they're just in separate tuning things, so you could tune the whole thing up and down. Um, it's got these CV ranges. So at the moment, press this, um, uh, it's not a mode, it's like a utility button. That sets these to different ranges of the CV, so how sensitive it is. When I'm on that one, I think I've got a two or three octave range. So there's a bit of a limitation in how far up and down you can go. Um, another limitation is probably the MIDI. I mean, you can set these to any MIDI channel, but it's only one or two, uh, or, you know, at the same time. Um, anything else? No, I can't think of any other cons if people have got any other dodgy things about these they don't like. Um, oh, I think one of them is the sync. Um, you've got very limited ability to change how many uh, pulses per step. I think there's only two or three you can choose, so that's a, a bit of a limitation. Right, let's go into the performance. This is where you can all go. <laughs> um, I, I, I record these in higher quality, so I often use some of these pieces. Totally improvised, I'm not, I've got no idea what I'm going to do. Um, I often use those as um, ways. I often sometimes put them in top of film, sometimes I put them on Bandcamp. But these complete improvisations are um, pretty, pretty good for using later. Um, so, thanks very much for some of the questions. Does the SQ1 have a quantizer? I forget. Um, no, it's it's quantized. It's built into scale. So, like I said, it's a C minor. I can demonstrate that. So the quantizer is built in. To that scale you can have it in um, chromatic mode and I think there is a free form mode to remember how to get to it might be that one no it's more of a stepped mode is that a free form one um, no I think there's a way to do it I remember ages ago being able to just tune it uh, in between steps and things Okay, thanks Bill, thanks um, 
And there's another question from Philip. Can the SU-1 to trigger Volker beats via MIDI? Um, yeah, it's got a MIDI out. So it will send a MIDI clock on that. Which is pretty cool. Um, uh, with the Volkers though, you would just use the sync out here, which is um, that's sort of standard Volker sync, which locks them together much better than MIDI anyway. It'd be a shame just to use the whole MIDI thing just for sync when you can use the sync out and all of these will chain together so i've i've used to have a rack where there was a sync chain going through all the volkers and these guys i carry all over the setup i also have two sq ones lying around how do you connect both at the same time with the analog four great question <coughs> so <coughs> coughing i use a clever little box which i don't know if i'm going to try and pull it out and probably Destroy the rig, but here it comes. Bang in the camera. Uh, oh, there we go. This guy. So, the, um, I've got this, yeah. So the, the SQ1 MIDI outs, which are these quarter inch TRS things going into the traditional gins, going to this MIDI merger. And then that's going out to the analog four. And that allows me to have MIDI channel 1, 2, and 3, and 4 if I wanted, if I wanted all four tracks to be sequenced by these, going through the merger box. Um, super easy to do. Yeah, Philip, you can use it to trigger beats. Um, you can use it to trigger any of the Volkers, the SQ ones. Um, using, using the MIDI out, of course, and then you can use the notes from here. But remember, all the Volkers have got one of these built in, effectively. The um, active step and the sequencer. And the modular I use a lot because it's um, like a 16-step active step. But I use the active step on the Volker keys. Um, sometimes on the, the drum machine ones, if you want sort of polymetric changing the step length and things like that. Or if you want weird kick drum beats at different intervals and changing them on the fly. Um, Oh yeah, Volker Drum, uh, sorry, Volker Kick, I've used that quite a lot on to create polymetric beats. So I'm, I'm not sure I would use these to trigger the Volkers because they've got them built in effectively. Uh, right. Cool. All right, let's go into performance mode and then um, see you on the other side. So if you want to ask any more questions as I perform, please do. And um, take it from there. I'll just... Um, Set this up, we'll have a nice soft start and then go into probably something a bit heavier later on using a, a lot of the things I've been showing you. I'll just see what stage that's in. So just doing a little bit of setup here. I think I might turn down that beat just so that um, when I bring the drum in there I can, it'll just be that. In fact, I'll fade it in, see what the bass is doing. So I'm just doing a bit of setup, explain what I'm doing. I'm going to start the bass on the third, third clock like I did before. Just check that's on two. Yeah. And here we go. So thank you very much. And um, ready, steady, go.